Hello and good evening. I believe we are live. It is stating that we're live. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to tonight's healing service brought to you by the Invitation Movement. I am Karina Maltzby and I'm very excited to be here tonight. Um, join in with us, share out the broadcast, let others know that we are on tonight. We have a great um, night pre prepared for you. We have an awesome guest tonight that uh, we want you to listen to the information that he has to share with us tonight. Um, we uh, have our guest, um, Dr. Well, excuse me, Dylan Fisher. He's director of the Governor's Faith and Community based initiative office. So we have someone coming from the governor's office to share with us about their, their focus, the history, the mission, um, and some news that is just coming out of the office and how they do connect with community initiatives and faith-based organizations. We want to hear about what is happening, uh, what we can be a part of, what we can connect to, um, so that we're more in tune and more aware. Uh, a lot of times I believe we're not as aware as we need to, some more than others um, or some less than others, but tonight I believe this is an opportunity for us to grow and for us to learn about what is happening uh, in our state, in the state of Florida. So uh, as we uh, start out tonight, I'm going to open us up in prayer, um, and we give honor tonight to Apostle Marquita Brooks, which is the founder of the Invitation Movement. Um, she is the national coordinator, as well as the founder of the Truth and Spirit Ministry. So we give honor to her tonight, and just thank you for joining in this healing services to bring us together, to unite us as one, to allow the Father God to heal us as he prepares us to do the work, to do the work of the kingdom. And he's given us a mandate in the invitation movement to have these healing services uh, via the online platform, to have healing uh, circles face-to-face uh, -face, um, uh, with one another, one you know, together. And then he's also called us uh, to do acts of justice as we go along and to facilitate peace strategies. So as we're working towards those things that the Lord has put forth before us tonight in this healing service, we have a great opportunity just to hear about what's happening and what's coming out of the governor's office. So let's pray. We're going to go into a time of worship and then we're going to have our guests come and share with us tonight. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for your presence being here with us. We thank you, Father, that you said your people perish for a lack of knowledge. And God, we thank you that tonight we have opportunity to get knowledge, to get more understanding, to be more connected to what you have going on. And, and there's things uh, that's happening, but Father, there's even greater things that are taking place. And we thank you for the governor's office. And we thank you for this, this group of individuals who are connecting with the community, who have initiatives to help build a stronger, better community, a connected community. And not only that, Father, they're connecting with ministries. And so we thank you, Father, for those that are doing this work. And I thank you tonight, God, that we can now be connected. We can get more information. We can uh, to uh, connect with one another and to help facilitate the work that needs to happen to, to turn our nation back to you uh, one city at a time. That is the goal of the invitation movement. That is our, our mandate to turn this nation back to you, Father, one city at a time. And so, God, we thank you. We turn this healing service over to you. We ask that you have your way. And we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. In Yeshua's name, we pray. Amen. And so we're going to turn it over to the Davids for a time of worship. Thank you.
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that. What a what a beautiful um just you know song of worship to our king. He is our king. He is Yeshua and he is coming back. Um, glory to God. And, and, and while we're waiting for him, we can love on him, worship him, uh, do what he's called us to do. Um, do it with his grace and his power and with his anointing and with his heart. And so if you uh, had not uh, been aware of, uh, we actually have a, um, uh, a faith-based community-based council, the Florida, there's a Florida faith-based and community-based council that serves as a formal advisory council to the executive office of the governor and to the legislator. I don't know if you are aware that this um, a council exists, but tonight we have the great pleasure of, of the director of the council uh, being here um, to share with us tonight um, again on the history of the council, mission, vision, their focus, some of the news that's happening, some of the things that they're working on there. Um, and so we're going to open up with that. We're going to actually turn it over to our guest tonight, uh, Mr. Dylan Fisher, and allow him to share uh, some of that with us. We have quite a bit of information that we want him to share with us tonight, but we're going to start there. So we're going to turn it over to you, Mr. Fisher. All right, great, Karina, thank you. Um, what a privilege to be with you, first of all. Uh, I think that's self-explanatory. It's great to be with you. Uh, again, my name is Dylan Fisher. I have the privilege of serving as the director of the governor's, Governor DeSantis' Faith and Community-Based Initiative Office and uh, the council that comes along with that office. And uh, seriously, what great worship this evening. I mean, that is just a fantastic level set for why we're here and a reminder that it's just so much bigger, right? What we're doing is so much bigger than us uh, and worship, ha and although worship is not just music, I mean, to be clear, right? It's not just music, but uh, it, it is a conduit for our worship and what a privilege to be with you. And I, uh, seriously, you guys are uber talented uh, and it would have been even more on display if you had me go first and sing, you'd have been like, wow. Uh, that's a big difference, big difference between you guys and me. So I'm glad it's you that was singing and not me. Um, but thank you guys. Just again, the lyrics and, and the purpose of, man, it, it's just, it's so much bigger than us. And that's really why uh, our office exists. Uh, I don't think everybody's in Florida. We have some people that are outside of Florida and across the country. So uh, get your bags and come on over to Florida because we're welcoming you here if you haven't already. Uh, so come on down. Uh, but again, thank you to the worship team. Thank you to Karina. Thank you to Teresa for uh, being the connector. Uh, she's the great connector, and I know a lot of you know her, and what a privilege to get to be able to get to know her a little bit. We've never met in person, believe it or not, um, but it feels like we have. So thank you for connecting us. Uh, and then a couple more thank yous. We want to thank uh, the governor for his boldness. Um, seriously, we, we are the governor's faith and community-based initiative office. There's a lot of politics that exists out there. We're not a part of that. We, we, we try and be straight shooters, bold, focused uh, on the mission ahead. And uh, we, we just call it how it is. And it's because of his boldness in his first year in office that he wanted to prioritize uh, the faith and community networks of Florida. Uh, and, and also thanking the governor's liaison for faith and community. So before Dylan ever came on board with the faith office, uh, the governor appointed Eric Dellenbach uh, to be the liaison for faith and community. If you have not heard or met Eric, you're missing out. Uh, it, is a, it is a treat to work for both the governor and Eric and serve under them. Um, Eric spent a lot of time in, in some incredible ministry places and, and what a privilege to work for them and to serve the state. Why do we exist? Why are we here? Why am I uh, taking up your time, your precious time this evening? Because um, you matter. Uh, you are the reason that we exist as the governor's faith and community initiative office. There's no other reason. When the governor first started out, <clears throat> And this was within the first few weeks of, of coming on as, as governor and taking the role of officer. So there's, as you can imagine, a lot of things going on, but a priority was uh, establishing an infrastructure to do three things. One is thank. So for all the faith and community leaders out there, whether you're a pastor, uh, whether you're a lay leader, whether you're just part of the faith networks of wherever you're at in the state of Florida or not, we wanna say thank you. Thank you for what you do. 
what you mean to your community, what you mean to a much bigger purpose and mission uh, than, than just what we're doing here. Uh, thank you. Uh, and we don't say thank you enough, especially from the government, right? We don't say thank you to our faith leaders uh, because you are the heartbeat of community. I don't think that in the history of civilization, we have ever had a successful, peaceful, verdant community or society that has been lacking strong faith community. It, just look at the arc of history, it doesn't exist. So we wanna say thank you. The second thing was we wanna build healthy lines of communication. For a long time, government's over here, faith is over here, and there's a big gap with, with very few, if any, bridges at all. A priority of this governor, of this administration, has, to been, has been to build healthy lines of communication because you matter and because the work that you do matters, right? So personally, obviously we care about the faith and community networks of Florida. Like you, you're why we exist, but even if we didn't, let's just say we didn't. The reality is that the church, that the faith networks, that ministry organizations day in and day out serve the most vulnerable. They live out James 1, they serve the least of these. You are the hands and feet. So even if we don't, you know, even if we didn't care, which we do, but even if we didn't, there's a very real appreciation for the fact that there are untold billions that the church is a part of, that the faith community is a part of every single day and every single year, right? So how do we communicate in a healthy way to build those bridges so that uh, we can have conversation, that we can dialogue, that we can serve one another and serve you really. It's, it's more about how can we elevate what you're already doing? And that's where the third thing comes in. The third thing was to resource and to connect. To resource and to connect. We exist in the long term to set up an infrastructure where regardless of who is in the governor's office, the faith and community networks of the state of Florida are always plan A for serving the most vulnerable, right? Because we know that the way that you serve is more efficient, it's more effective, and ultimately, uh, there's a lot of different organizations that can impact someone's life, but there are only a few that can transform someone's life, right? We want to resource and to connect you to the best of our ability, because the reality is, Listen, I'm not a huge government guy myself, right? Because it's gotten in the way a lot of times. It's, it's made the life of the church and our faith networks very, very difficult at times. But government exists and faith exists, but we're serving the same people just in different ways. So James 1.27 says, pure and undefiled religion is this, serving the widows and the orphans, right? The widows generally in today's society are, are single moms. It's not because the husband has has died in battle or, or, or died early, it's because of abandonment or neglect, right? So you have single moms, you have vulnerable kids, foster care, adoption, that's the bread and butter of who we are, right? And speaking as a Christian, you know, that, that's who we are. That's our mission. That, it's very direct. We can't avoid it. It's that pesky verse that really establishes our identity and service and community. Well, guess what? The Department of Children and Families <clears throat> is over foster care and adoption. The church is very much there, but the government is also serving just in its own lane, its own silo, not communicating. How can we break that down? It doesn't make sense, right? If we're both serving the same populations, how can we serve them better? That's it. We, at, the end of it at the end of the day, we want the vulnerable people of the state of Florida to be served better, better than they were before through the faith and community networks of the state. Widows, orphans, uh, veterans, uh, those that are in an elderly community suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's, uh, those that have unique abilities, those that are in prison, that are incarcerated. Um, th these are the populations that not only do we have very, very direct scriptural direction on who to serve, uh, but there, there's very real impacts for, for serving these populations. So we want to work together, we want to work better, uh, and we want to uplift and elevate what you're already doing, because we know that you're already there, right? But sometimes government's in the way, whether it's red tape, closed doors, lack of communication, we wanna tear all that down. Uh, we wanna get the nonsense out of the way so that you can continue to serve better. Now, we also like to say that generally speaking, the, the, the church and faith networks and ministry organizations, 
there is not a heart problem. Your heart is not an issue, right? Your passion, your direction, our mandate, our kingdom focus is not an issue. Resources, generally speaking, right? It's different for everybody, but resources in the United States of America are generally speaking, not an issue. So it's not a heart problem. It's not a resource problem. The biggest challenge that ministry and faith networks face today is connection. It's a connection problem. What do I mean by that? I mean that certainly we serve those that are in, you know, our, our you know, uh, houses of worship uh, uh, within our immediate community network. But the reality is where I'm sitting right here in Tallahassee, Florida, I know that there are hurting people, families, kids, single moms that are probably right down the street from me. I just don't know it. We, sometimes we just don't have access or exposure until later on. If you think about the process of a loving single mother who has three kids, two kids, one kid, whatever, she loves her kids dearly, but maybe she's making minimum wage. That's not cutting it. She cannot sustain that, right? She's having difficulty with housing. Sometimes she doesn't have a place to live. So they're in a car sleeping at night. There's all these different challenges that might be on her path, but what, what we're seeing is, but for the intervention of faith and community networks, what's going to happen is she's going to continue down a path and eventually it's just going to catch up to her. And those kids are probably going to enter the foster care system. They're going to get removed because she just can't, she can't handle it. If, if they're sleeping in a car, that's not safe. And, and ultimately she's not going to be able to provide because in the state of Florida and nationally, 80% of child removals are neglect, not abuse. 20% of abuse. And when there's abuse, get the kids out immediately. But in that 80%, it's neglect, which means that they're preventable. A lot of times it's lack of uh, proper bedding. A lot of time it's um, lack of a suitable housing environment. Like it's little things that are preventable and avoidable, not because the mom or the family does or grandma does not care. It's just a lot of times it's economic, to be honest with you. It's economic issues that are, that are putting people in binds and putting them in this 80% category. So what if, what if a tool existed? What if we as the faith and community networks are wherever we are, let's say it's the best state in the union, so the state of Florida, you're in Florida. What if we could see the needs in our community in real time? What if we could see those needs upstream? So instead of after the trauma has already happened, after all the negative things have already happened and, and we're, we're trying to restore because of the trauma that's happened, what if we got up front, upstream, and met those needs in real time? The future of, of who we are as an initiative, and I, I told you this in the beginning, we exist so that regardless of who's in the governor's office in the future, we want you to be on the front line. We want you to be plan A. We want you to be resourced, equipped, and elevated in a way that it doesn't matter who's in office, your work is baked in and has continued to be the leading edge of serving the least of these. That's our goal, long-term. So we need a platform and we need an infrastructure. That tool comes in the name of Care Portal. That tool comes in the arc of First Lady Casey DeSantis's Hope Florida Initiative, right? Again, guys, this is, we're just practical. That, that's our goal. How do we get there? Care Portal is a technology platform that I challenge you as I get super boring and, and belabor my points and you're starting to tune out. When you start to tune out, go to, go, go to careportal.com or careportal.org and, and just pull it up. Look at the interactive map. And right now, this very second, you can see real-time needs in your community. My home zip is 32127. That's where I grew up in Daytona Beach, Florida. I don't live there now, but that's where I grew up. I can look in 32127 and I can see what needs exist right now. A lot of times it's single moms that just have very basic economic issues. Let's say that mom, a lot of times uh, uh, child removals also come because of drugs, right? Mom or dad is heavily into in something that is getting them back into trouble and they cannot watch the kids or they're in prison, whatever it is. Grandma, grandpa, family members are oftentimes the next placement that keeps them out of foster care. Sometimes grandma does not have beds for all the kids. If you don't have beds, the kids are gone. 
So the most requested item in Care Portal is a bed or bed frames. The single most common requested item. Care Portal is connecting the real-time needs. You have people who are in need and you have people who meet needs, us. We meet needs. It just connects them in real time. So you look on, you can have a timestamp that an, a need got entered 15 minutes ago. You can meet that need right now. That's the whole point. That's the model. That's the vision. That's where we're headed. The first lady's been extraordinary. Guys, again, we are so blessed in Florida uh, with the leadership that we have. Uh, first lady's passion and commitment and Man, she just does not care about how things have been doing, how we've been doing them. She doesn't care about how, what tradition says. She doesn't care about all these things that are really unnecessary. She cares about action and making a difference. And it has been a joy to be able to serve in that. Um, so again, we can maybe touch on this in the next section, but there's just very, um, we, we, we have our general purpose but then we start to really refine down and talk about, okay, that's great that you care about faith and community networks. That's fantastic. A lot of people do. What's the difference? What's the point? Why are you different than every other faith initiative that has ever existed before? Because it's not about us and it's about long-term solutions that regardless of who's in office, man, we wanted to keep on, keep on driving. That doesn't mean that we don't do things right now that are temporal to say that you matter, to value you, to resource you, to say, thank you for how you serve. But and every time that we are, we are doing our temporal things that are really in a short period of time, we've also got our eye on the long term. We've got our eye up at the end of the journey of what does this look like for the elevation of something that is so much bigger than us. So that's a, that's a decent chunk of talking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it back over. I'm sorry. I may have gone a little bit over my time slot. No, you did great. You did great. Thank you. I'm like, like, wow, you know, you just have no idea. Yeah, like, I think a lot of people have no idea that this is available. And wow, that care portal sounds amazing. Um, you know, because I know a lot of times we as believers, we say we want to be blessed to be a blessing. And then like you say, you don't really know what needs are out there that could be like down the street from you, but if somebody could input their information into this care portal, how quickly could you be a blessing and really begin to meet the needs of your community real time? Like people will not, children won't have to be removed. I've worked in the foster care system, so I'm very familiar with it and I have a heart for um, children. So to if you could keep them at home, and not have to strip them from their family just simply because it's food or it's a bed or you know those type of things that can be put in place wow how could you change the destiny of a child's life than them to be removed and have to be moved from home to home when it's some simple things that we could help with as a community so that uh that sounds amazing just to hear that you know the governor and his wife are very passionate about families and about children and about the community. I mean, that is just amazing. So I'm gonna turn it over to Teresa now, let her share some, and she's gonna also have uh, some questions for you as well. So I'm gonna turn it over to her. Okay, so while we're waiting on Teresa, uh, having some technical issues there, um, we're going to move on uh, to, we'll actually go ahead and just jump into uh, the post row uh, information, just uh, let Ms. Adrian share a little bit, um, and then we'll come back to Ms. Teresa. So Ms. Adrian, I'm going to turn over to you, let you share some, and uh, then we'll go back to uh, Mr. Fisher in a moment. Amen, amen. It's truly an honor to have you here and to um, talk about this much needed uh, topic. Um, we here at the uh, Invitation Movement, this is close to our heart, it's our mandate. 
Uh, we have been praying into uh, the abortion um, issue and we have been really just kind of being part of the accumulated prayers <laughs> in this matter. And, you know, so <laughs> the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous truly do avail as much. And I did not know about this care portal. You know, and I tell you, this is why I love Florida so much. You know, you know, just to talk about my, my testimony, I'm originally from New York, but when I came to Florida, when God sent me to Florida, I mean, I was in dire straits, straits in New York. But when I came to Florida, my life changed 108. I just turned around. You know, God just blessed my life. I met my husband here and everything, you know, and we've been married 20 plus years and together 27 years, but my life changed for the better is what I'm saying. Florida is a beautiful state. It's a wonderful state to raise your children. It's just, just beautiful, you know, and this, this is why I'm so passionate about my state because I know how much of a Goshen has been for me, a safe place it has been for me. And so, you know, this is why I pray, you know, we intercede for this state so much and for our leaders, amen, for our leaders. So it's amazing to see how God is so faithful and how he's so just. And, 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 and I tell you, when, when that happened, you know, we was praying into the 15 week ban and we was believing God that this would be a sanctuary state for the unborn. That, that was the prayer, you know? And it was like, <laughs> it's going down and down and down. Now we have six weeks, you know, it's God, you know, he is so good and he is so faithful and he truly does answer prayer. And so that morning when um, we had went out a couple of weeks ago, just praying in the land, boots on the ground, going to different sites, strategically praying, stealth. You know, you can be on the scene without making a scene, right? So we went out on, you know, we went out in, in, in to, to Walgreens and CVS and we staked the ground. We had these red stakes. You see how we had these red stakes and we put the name of Yave on the, our stakes and we, and we claimed the territory for God, for the kingdom. We were advancing the kingdom of God. And um, to hear, just next, let you know, a week later, to hear that you know Governor DeSantis signed that bill that into law, you know. And in the morning, when I woke up, and when I saw that, all I could say was Hallelujah. That was the first thing my husband liked to have news on in the morning. So that was the first thing that I when I opened my eyes, and I was like, To God be the glory. You know, and it's amazing and how how they had the um on the news, they had this bless me, they had the um the the on the in the rotunda, they had the they said they were protesters, but I heard the Holy Spirit said they're not protesters, they were intercessors. While while Governor DeSantis was in his office and while they was um, just determining whether or not, you know, when it was in the legislature, they was in the rotunda praying, you know, for God to move and for him to, to, sign that, to sign that bill into law, you know, I just saw the power of prayer. I just saw faith move in the mountain. And, you know, it's just amazing how God is so faithful and he just needs us to be unified. He just needs us to pray. He just needs us to come together. And because, you know, to be in a state that's in alignment with God's moral, moral, moral character, just to be in a state where the leaders are really, really, really in alignment with the word of God is a blessing. It truly is a blessing. So, you know, post row America, you know, Florida is, is, is on the map, you know, Florida is on the map and it's something, it's, it's, it's so good to see that they have this care portal. I never knew about it. And then when I look down and it says, explore the vetted urgent needs of children and families across the nation. So that lets me know it's a safe portal. Because, you know, you know, you want to help people, you want to be, you want to reach out to people, but you want to make sure you're not putting yourself in harm's way, you know, so it's good to know that it says that it's vetted, you know, and you can go on here and you can be, be able to just see in your area, the things, you know, the, 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 the needs that's, that's in your area and in your community. So that's a blessing. And then also to know that um, 
the pregnancy centers in, in my area, you know, I was able to connect with, with one of the pregnancy centers in my area and um, the founder, BB Ford, she is just astronomical. She's been on the news, you know, she's been doing this forever, you know, and now she's going to run for, for state representative, you know, because she's being a voice for the voiceless. And, you know, we have some, we have some awesome leadership in Florida especially in the pro-life so you know i just thank god you know for for what what he's doing and how he truly is moving and to be a part of playing into it that's the part that's amazing you know to be able to be a part of it and to see god answer because it's truly his heart life you know we have to stand for life and that's what he is about he is life he's the way the truth and the life so you know i'm just i'm just <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing. So I'm just glad that you was able to come and share this um, care portal with us. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yes, we did have, um, uh, we participated with the 40 days of life uh, that's been going on. Um, and so we had an opportunity to just do our part in that, do our part in that as the uh, Florida team. And so that was, um, it was just great. It was just great to go out and uh, like uh, Miss Adrian stated, you know, stealth mode, you don't have to make a scene, but you're just doing the work of the Lord and you're going out, you know, in faith and you're going out and you're decreeing and declaring over the land and you're giving the land back to God. Uh, you're returning the land back to him and declaring that that this the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and everything that dwells therein. So I wanted to see, um, Mr. Fisher, I wanted to actually turn it back over to you and just ask you uh, in reference to if you could share a little bit with us about the prayer link um, that, uh, that the office has. Um, if you can share a little bit with us about that and anything else that you just want to share, how individuals can get connected um, I did go on the website and I see that there are like volunteer opportunities with various um, uh, community groups. So I just want to turn it back over to you to allow you to share some more and then we'll uh, let Teresa wrap us up. Yeah, uh, and a lot of a lot of really good content to go over in just a second, but I don't want anybody uh, that is single on this call to miss the fact that Miss Adrian said that she came to Florida and met her husband there. So for our single folks on the call, Florida's got a lot of things going for you. You might just find your spouse too. So come on down, uh, give us a message. Would you come? We'll help you. We'll help you move down. Um, but it, the other thing that she's talking about is life, and and it, there is no greater thing that we can do than to serve and protect life. Uh, and so we were celebrating. Uh, when was that? A couple of days ago, was that Wednesday or Thursday? Um, we were celebrating in the office uh, when, when that bill passed and when the governor signed it. And so, you know, um, a lot of times a bill will pass and it'll be a considerable amount of time before an executive officer takes action on that piece of legislation. Sometimes it's very merited, usually just you know, review, thorough due diligence. Uh, we knew exactly what was going on here and, and the governor uh, signed it that night. Um, so we're celebrating what that means for the state of Florida uh, and to, to use his exact words, life is a sacred gift worthy of protection. I couldn't agree anymore. Uh, so we were thrilled that the state of Florida is stepping up and, and we were at, uh, I think we were at 24 originally, then we went down to 15 and now we're down to six. Um, and so, yes, we were praising God for that and, and what that means for uh, I think it was last year was anywhere from 70 to 80,000 uh, uh, babies. So uh, there's a very, you know, the, the, the weight and the burden of, of what's there is so significant and uh, just extraordinary how I know that uh, many of you uh, have been on that campaign for a long time. Uh, for those of you that look young enough to have been praying 50 years ago, um, you were there, uh, you have been there and um, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, because um, we are in a better place because of it. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. We, we, we are proud to be a pro-life state. So we are, we are celebrating the most recent result. Not done yet, but still. Um, all right. Uh, you mentioned a couple of resources. We want to be able to serve and, and elevate you the best that we can. Um, so I'm just going to give you a couple. And 
these will be kind of general things so that we can help uh, connect with a little bit more specificity. If you want to learn more about what's going on in Care Portal, you want to learn more about what's going on in Hope, Florida. The good news is you can Google both of those things. Those are not, um, they're, they're very readily available. Um, and a special arrangement with Florida, uh, the state, we uh, have stepped up for others, which is Chris Tomlin's foundation, a Christian music singer. They have stepped up and uh, put a huge investment in the state of Florida and Care Portal uh, is absolutely zero cost. So you want to get on, whether you're a church, whether you're a ministry, you're an individual, you're a business, doesn't matter. Uh, uh, we are a pilot and I know that we have other states that are represented on here. Uh, we love you. We, we call it how we see it. Florida's leading. Uh, I say that to, to, to prod a little bit, but also it's just the reality of Florida is leading in, in this administration from day one has said, we, we want to be the best and we want to be leaders and we want to be bold and we want to do what we know is right. We want to follow the North Star. Uh, we want to stay steady and, and keep fighting the good fight. And um, we are leaders in what is happening with, with Care Portal and that model of state investment. Um, we are leaders in um, uh, trying to connect uh, and elevate the faith and community networks of our state. Uh, and one of those ways is we know that you serve in a lot of different spaces. And I don't know if I can get these resources to you that can be sent out post call, but I'll just share them now. Um, we have a special line. We joke and call it the red phone or the bat phone. Uh, it's a special line called the faith and community information line. It's actually how Teresa and I connected originally. Um, it's 850-717-9494. Again, 850-717-9494. Uh, give it a call. That line is, is designed specifically for you, the faith and community networks of, of the state of Florida. Uh, you have questions, you have issues, uh, you have problems, um, you have whatever. Uh, we, if we don't have the answer, we're going to find out where the answer is and get you connected to it. Uh, we are not going to have you sit on a phone tree for 15 hours uh, to serve your community. We are not going to let just silly uh, uh, arbitrary things get in the way of you serving and, and living out your ministry to serve your community and serve your state. Um, so that's for you. Um, give it a call anytime. Uh, now, if you call it tonight at, at 930, nobody's going to pick up and you're going to get the voicemail. But you know, we have a live human in normal operating hours that's going to answer that call and, and we're going to serve you because you're important and you're worth it. Um, and then faithandcommunityflorida.com is our main website, and that's got links to Care Portal and Hope Florida. Uh, it's really simple. There's a saying that is kind of the theme of our office, and it comes from uh, the governor's liaison for faith, Eric Dellenbach, who's my boss. You cannot unsee what you've seen. You cannot unsee what you've seen. And my hunch is that many of you have, have seen a lot and you have seen the reality of, of hurting people and families, but you've also seen the uh, result of divine intervention and, and, and the impact that you have. You've seen it on the other side of, of the spectrum. And uh, that is where that's the whole point of, of connection. We, we want to make known what's right there in real time in your community. You don't have to meet a single need on Care Portal. You don't have to sign up and if, as a part of the Hope Florida Network and say, hey, I, I just want to be available to help. I mean, you don't have to act on any of that, but we just want to say, are you willing to see uh, what's out there? Are you willing to see um, an opportunity that, that uh, you know, in fact, it might even be an invitation. Are you willing to see that invitation uh, to be a part of something that's a lot bigger than yourself? So uh, we've got a lot of awesome uh, things that are going on, but I, I don't want to take up any more time. But check us out at faithincommunityflorida.com. Give us a call. Uh, I'll share my email as well. Uh, if you guys are moving to Florida, you got you to gotta email me. You got to let me know. We'll, we'll throw a party. We'll do something. Um, but we want to be here for you. I know the Virginians. I see you guys. You, you love Virginia. It's a great state. Um, but uh, uh, we want to be here for you because that's why we exist. So take advantage of that because we want to serve you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for that information. You heard the numbers um, and the um, web address to go and check out and get connected 
there if you have a faith-based ministry you have a the church ministry and you want to get involved um, you need to reach out to mr fisher you need to connect um, with those numbers in that um, web address uh, so i'm going to turn it over to Teresa and let her share briefly and then we're going to close out with the ironic blessing i hope you've enjoyed tonight's information um, uh, please share it out so others can know what is available in the great state of Florida. Wow, what amazing uh, information that I did not know. And I'm hoping that they'll put more like commercials, Mr. Fisher, some commercials out there or something more out there so that people are more aware, uh, especially the faith-based communities, um, that this is this. And maybe they do know, but I didn't know. <laughs> so if I can see a commercial or something, um, I think it would just be amazing. So just wanted to throw that out there. I'm going to turn it over to Teresa. So can everyone hear me now? Can everyone hear me now? Amen. Praise the Lord. We're just so blessed to have you here, Dylan, with us tonight. I just Can we just bless the Lord for him? I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm so grateful to the Lord. Um, Oh, my God, give honor to the Lord God Almighty, our King, our King, our great King. I'm just grateful and blessings and, and honor to our Apostle Marquita and just Elder Frederica, the, the Director of the Invitation Movement, just everyone here, um, Karina and Adrian, I'm just the, the David. I'm, I'm excited. So with my time, I want to first start with um, the scripture. We, we were praying earlier and, and the Lord kept saying, kept speaking abundant life, abundant life. And so um, the scripture from John 10 and 10, and it says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And so um, it, it's just a, a blessing because this, or this agency, this office is, is helping to not not only all the mandates that you spoke about with um, the widows and the orphans, but to uh, to be a vessel for bringing abundant life to people. And I'm just so grateful for that. And just very quickly, it was a, it was amazing because I actually found out about your organization, the agency, the office, through Intercessors for America when Eric Dellenbeck was on. That uh, it was the first call of the year, in fact. And so. That just, uh, we were excited about that, that Florida was the first call on the Intercessors for America uh, platform. But um, that's how I learned about you. And then I called that number and uh, Dylan, Dylan was just so amazing, just welcoming and just so down to earth and just his faith just went through the, the phone and we just, it was just such a blessing. And, and I, I'm so, so grateful for this connection and for everyone on staff. But what I wanted to share also, you mentioned a couple of things. Um, and I want to just touch on that, but I uh, want to talk about my experience, direct experience with um, coming on with the invitation for the sessions with the secretary. But very quickly, you mentioned about helping people because um, the neglect, they, they, they could be avoided for like removing children. And so I actually worked with um, and went to the Oasis Pregnancy Center Walk for Life. And the, the guest speaker was a woman who was considering abortion and she had been sleeping in her car. And the, I don't know how they found her. Or she, I don't know if she reached out, I, I forget, but they helped her. They actually helped her into transitional housing and she made a choice for life. And so, you know, these groups, these centers and agencies and, and, and faith communities and faith organizations, they, they need to know about you and they need to know that you're out there and supporting, supporting them and supporting us. So I want to just say, I know, of, uh, I, I saw it firsthand, it, it, you know, it's a, it was a real life experience. I mean, you may have sp been speaking hypothetically, but that happened. And so what you're saying is right on, right on point. And then the other thing I wanted to share was our um, experience with the care portal. Actually, you, when you mentioned it to us, to, to me back um, when we had that first talk, I shared with our, as a lead intercessor for Florida Invitation Movement, I shared with our team and we actually were able to go on to that site and pray and intercede for those people who had those needs. So every need, um, you know, we didn't go to physically meet all the needs and whoever was led to do that, did that. But we, as a team, we, we were able to pray as the Holy Spirit um, would lead us 
for those particular needs. And prayer is so important. And that's where my heart is. Of course, with of course, you have to have boots on the ground, like Adrian <laughs> was, was talking about. We need both. But um, as an intercessor, that um, is, is where you know I, I gravitated to the prayer portion of that care portal. And that was such a blessing to, to us to know that we were impacting in that way as well. And then the other thing, just bless my heart. I have a couple of my notes here. I want to make sure I say it correctly. Praise the Lord. I don't want to mispronounce the secretary's name. Um, from the office of, well, we were invited. I received a special invitation. And I, and I'm, of course, it had to come through. Dylan had to, you know, we, we actually, we signed up for, because he invited us to sign up. So the faith-based communities or the churches, there is a, um, a place on the website where you can actually sign up um, your church or sign up your organization or your, your, your individual self if you're a minister or, you know, working through your ministry. And I signed up. And so I was invited to be on this call. Um, it was with the office of this. It was with Eric Dellenbach, of course, and the liaison. And then with the office of the Secretary of Florida, Department of Elder Affairs, um, Michelle Branham. Am I saying it right? Oh, amen. And so I'm going to tell you just a quick, because I know we're very short of time, but just a quick, um, quick personal thing. I, I went on the call. I, my mom is 90 years old. Praise the Lord. She's still with us. And um, and I went on the call, you know, not really, you know, I had spent time um, caring for my mom and, at different times over the years. Um, but recently, since I've moved to Florida, um, I haven't um, seen um, some of the progression of my mom's um, condition. OK, so she she's suffering for um, for some um, some things in her age. So I went on this call and. The information, of course, um, the secretary is a believer and her faith, she said, I mean, that was the most important thing for her. And she talked about it with her own mom and how her mom um, instructed her about her faith being the, the most important thing, um, you know, serving the Lord. And, and she shared so many tangible, practical resources for the elder community. And I'm thinking, Wow, my mom, I have, a, I have an elderly mom and I'm on this call. And it's just, I can sit here today and say it was just the steps of the, the, the Lord ordered my steps to be on this call and just directed it. And, and now today, right at this moment, my mom is here visiting with me. And it is just, um, it is just amazing to know that I received information before I needed it through this office. And I wanna tell you that um, there are other, um, there were other um, um, sessions with the secretary. And that's one of the things I thought was so different from some of the other groups and uh, organizations and governmental uh, platforms and faith-based um, programs, because they actually allowed you to be a part of this call where you not only received information, you were able to connect right away with other community, faith-based community members and, and, and community members, and particularly with those who are in government. And um, in this case, wonderful case of believers as well. So I, I just wanna say um, there were other um, um, things that are you know, very near and dear to my heart, women and domestic violence and um, you know, families and children. And I just, I'm just grateful for that. So I wanted to share that and give Dylan that opportunity. I know we were very short for time, but to give Dylan the opportunity to just kind of um, speak to what those sessions are like and um, and how Hope for Florida with Lady um, First Lady um, Casey um, DeSantis has been such a blessing to all of the, us out here who need that support. Yeah, thank you, Teresa. And you're, uh, I think you're about to come on staff uh, based off of how well you advocate for us. Um, but uh, yes, to, to, to wrap that all up, we, when I talked about the resource piece, um, that's, that's an example. So what she was on was we call it session with the secretary. And it's a unique thing that the initiative has developed where uh, everybody that signs up on that faithandcommunityflorida.com website, that's our general governor's faith and community initiative website. So faithandcommunityflorida.com. It's got a it's got a little button where you can sign up 
And whether you're, you know, a business, uh, a church, a faith institution, a ministry, nonprofit, individual, you can sign up uh, and everything that you share there just helps us say, okay, this is where you're serving. And that's when we email out and we're, we're uh, sending this information out, that's the, that's the contact list that it's going to. So if you don't see it, it's because you haven't got on our distribution list from that. We can only share it if we know who you are. Uh, so sign up if you haven't already in your state of Florida, because that's where we're sending these resources out. And that session was, uh, we get the, the top state leaders. So elder affairs, uh, uh, foster care and adoption, corrections for all of you that are in prison ministries or interested in learning about it, whatever, um, or reentry, even when, when folks are coming back into, into society, um, we bring the secretary of the Department of Corrections. We bring the secretary of the Department of Children and Families. You're not getting, there's great people that serve there, but I think there's an importance of the person at the top coming on uh, for two reasons. One, because they have the authority to say, you're having a problem, we'll fix it right there because we care about you. And it, symbolically, it, again, it's, it's just emphasizing how much uh, you are valued, how much uh, we care about you. And so we get our top state leaders to come on and just cut, cut through all the red tape, cut through all the nonsense and say, man, this is our vision. We want to help you. How can we help you? These are the tools that we have created specifically for you. Uh, and we do those uh, with different state leaders. Uh, there's other uh, really special, unique, and, and frankly, exclusive. I mean, we, we cannot invite everybody unless we know who you are. Uh, so uh, join on there. And, and, and we just want to help you better serve. That's the entire point. And uh, Teresa has been a great advocate and, and great stories to share that. And, and we're just so grateful that we have more Teresa's in the state of Florida and all of you on here. Uh, even if you live in Virginia, we still love you. Thank you for what you do. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. This has been a great discussion tonight. We're so happy to have our guests on, Dylan Fisher. We appreciate all that you've shared tonight and Miss Adrian, Miss Teresa. Um, yes, this has been a great, I hope that you've um, been enlightened. I've been enlightened. You need to go and sign up, uh, get connected, get on those calls, find out um, how you can connect with the council and how the council can support you in the mission that you're doing in your local community. And so thank you so much for joining us tonight on tonight's healing service. Um, God bless you abundantly. We're going to close out with the ironic blessing over our lives. And so we're going to turn it over to the Davids for that. Thank you so much again for joining and God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to sing the ironic blessing. And what I would like for you to do is just imagine that you're sitting on the father's lap and he's holding you and rocking you and he kisses you on the forehead because that's his mark, his protection. And I'm blessed. To, <laughs> I'm blessed to have my daughter and my wife with me. So um, you want to put this over both of y'all? <laughs> OK. All right. <laughs> there we go. Praise God. Hallelujah.
Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Blessings to each and every one of you.